Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz, and this is another installment of 15 Minutes with a Mentor series. And really excited to be joined by Ben Duncan over in Australia today. And in this series, really simply, we're going to ask some of the mentors from inside the community seven questions in 15 minutes. And we're going to do this every day. Um, in conjunction with the launch of the Recruitment Mentors community. So before we get into this, Ben, if you could introduce yourself for those that may not know who you are, and uh, we'll, we'll do this. Cool, yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, I'm Ben Duncan. I'm the director of Talent Hub. Um, we are Sydney-based, uh, very small Salesforce recruitment specialist company. Uh, I'm from from London originally, but I've been living in Sydney for the last 10 years, and uh yeah, no, no immediate plans to, to move back to the cold. <laughs> Love that. Right. So first question, interested to hear this from you. So what was your biggest challenge in 2020? How did you overcome it and what did you learn from it? Um, I, I Actually, your you point around how did I overcome it, I think that's still a, a piece of a work in progress. Like my biggest challenge um, through 2020 and, and beyond has, has always kind of been managing that work-life balance piece. Um, mm. So, as I mentioned, we're a small business. I'm I'm the only hands-on recruiter in our business, and my colleague Gemma manages all of our marketing and, and builds our brand ultimately. Um, and we've been really busy through COVID. We've been one of the fortunate um, companies that recruit in an ecosystem that that has been pretty busy, pretty vibrant through COVID. Um, so, the biggest challenge for me has actually been managing um, what what's going outside, what's going on outside of work, and managing the kind of stresses of, of life in COVID. And, uh, and some kind of personal challenges that we've been going through through a really busy time with work as well and, and trying to be present in both. Um, that's, mm. that's been been a real challenge because obviously I'm working from home, um, like I'm, I'm here kind of 24 hours a day at the moment and, uh, and being present with family life and, and work life is, is a real challenge. Um, so I've tried to set kind of, th these are the hours I work, um, I have a, an off button. Um, I kind of have been trying not to read emails in the evening um, and and having actually really defined uh, working hours and lunch breaks, things like that. But but yeah, it's definitely still a, a work in progress because um, being a small business owner and, and being very much on the tools, as you you know, you know, you get calls at all different times in the day, and um, and when something comes up, it's it's difficult to turn it away or, or look the other way. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. So I guess just real emphasis on the importance of trying to do your best to be present with your family and and work yeah really interesting so on on this one then it'd be interesting uh, to hear this so what what working from home tip could you share with other recruiters that has had a sort of massive impact on your productivity do you think um i, I actually find that um yes working from home is uh, obviously we're, we're kind of all doing at the moment but like have a dedicated area that's the standard stuff but i like getting out as well so if you can still um, like have a have some time out of um out of the the, the office that you're in like i go um, to to um, some some different spots around where I live, just to completely get a different change of scenery. And I find like that the couple of hours that I'm out of the house are my most productive. Like I I actually go there with you know if you if you allow yourself a certain amount of time to get a task done, that's how long it takes. Um, so by going to to different locations and saying right, I'm going to be here an, for an hour and I'm going to knock this task out. Like that that is always my most productive time from when I've been working out of an office environment. Um, yeah, nice. Because yeah, I can make things drag over a long period of time if I'm at home because I've got other stuff going on, or yeah, there's just other ways to drag something out. Whereas um, having a dedicated desk that that isn't the office space that you're in day to day, um, and and just going and really focusing on getting some core tasks done in that period of time has been really productive for me. Yeah, nice, interesting. So what I know you get a lot of inbound business, but like, what has been the most effective way for you to win business in the last twelve months? Um. Yeah, I think I think like having a brand online has been been really really important for me. Um, like it's something I've I've been investing in over, for the last few years, and um, and yeah, it's just been a game changer really. Like the amount of when I pick up the phone to a customer, um, if if it's a cold call, they they quite often have seen one of my posts, read a, a, a blog of ours. Um, but but yeah, just really creating um, value in the market that that means that people want to come to me and understand how we can help with their requirements has, has kind of been the the, the, the key kind of business development tool. Um, and that's just kind of constant, right? So you're not having to, to set yourself a target of making X amount of calls per day because you've just got constant content that's going out and, and stays online for long periods of time. So 
Um, so yeah, just just being visible, building a brand, and um, and and having input to the market that's not just we've got X amount of jobs. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm not surprised by that. You, you you've done that really well. And uh, what what habit or hobby did you start in 2020 that you're going to continue in 2021? Um, cool. What habit? I think like this this is completely non work related, but it's like, yeah, that's yeah. cool. So I, uh, I've, I've started smashing my 10,000 steps per day minimum, but, nice. um, like I go for a really long walk before work. Um, I've got two dogs. So like, that's a, that's an opportunity just to completely clear my head and not take my phone. Um, yeah. so I do a good hour, then I go for a walk at lunch and a, another walk in the afternoon. So, um, yeah, like I'm, I'm kind of racking up 17, 18,000 steps every day. Um, and, and it's not so much about the, the fitness or the, the health aspect of that, but it's just good downtime to be away from my phone, away from my screen, um, trying not to think about like, uh, you know, interview processes I've got going on. Um, and, and yeah, it's been amazing. Like before I'd sit on a train, not for very long, we don't commute that long in, in Australia, but I'd sit on a train, I'd be on my phone, um, you know, I'd be walking and talking, or like making phone calls, j- just absolutely having a clear head for a few hours a day has been really, really beneficial. Yeah, I, I can definitely relate to that. that. That's awesome. What What do you think is better, the first coffee in the morning or the first pint post work on a Friday? Uh, coffee, hundred percent Australian. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 Australian coffee is the one. <laughs> You're the first person to say that, but I'm I'm so the first. I'm the first coffee in the morning, and I'm still. I, I was due to go to Sydney last year, so I'm, I'm cannot wait to experience that. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, uh, well, if you, are you going to go to Melbourne too? Um, not sure, but the the original plan was basically to I had but to do a live podcast event in Sydney. Obviously, that can't I had to cancel that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I I, need, I'm, I can't wait to experience Australian coffee for sure. So next question is a bit more of a scenario, Ben. It's so slightly different, but basically, I want to just sort of hear how you would a- approach it. Basically, so there's a particular business on your target client list that you've tried to communicate with and, and get in with and um, start working with for a long period of time over a year. But over that time, they've had touch points with you. So maybe different hiring managers have, have sort of seen your content or engaged with it. You may send a couple of emails and through your candidate network, you managed to get one of the hiring managers contact details. So you call that hiring manager, they pick up an answer and say, hello, who is this? Would just be really interested to hear sort of how you'd approach that. So you're the uh, you're the hiring manager. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I would uh, I firstly I'd, I'd send a, an email first, like I'd send some sort of content. So there's a, a warmer call, and so when I call you, I'd say, "Hey, Shem, I've just sent you an email um, regarding some of the the Salesforce um, surveys that we've been running in the last twelve months. Um, I thought it'd be really prevalent for you right now because I've heard that you're doing." a greenfield implementation of xyz um i've made over 200 salesforce placements in the last five years um, and i'm really confident that i can add value to your business um i've worked with a few of the the, the candidates that you've got in the team at the moment and i'd love to talk through how we can add value over your your, your next few requirements when's a, a good time to come by and meet you to run through how we can help yeah solid it's that what, what's come out of this which i think is really interesting which you just did there is like it's um leading with like giving rather than taking uh, is, is is the interesting point there i think yeah like i think um like my, my whole business um and ever since i formed the business has been built on value um and that's like i've like i i got taught really on early on in my my recruitment career that if you can add value on every single call you make then then people will remember you uh, so like even if someone doesn't really doesn't want to talk to you even if you send them after that like a uh, an interesting piece of information mm. that you've got from the market or something that relates to their skill set like you're providing value and you're different um so yeah everything we do is around providing value to people we work with and then from there it just flows organically into relationships and and ultimately business yeah and i think the i just think like if the quicker because it is sort of counterintuitive isn't it like especially early on in your recruitment career you you're sort of given these responsibilities or pressures to like get them like take basically it's like i need to do this i need to get this out of that that call blah 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 but actually if you flip that on its head and like like you said on each call you try and give more than you take it's all going to help you everything <laughs> yeah like <laughs> you know i, I mean? remember um like in, in the early days when when i'd make a phone call and then people would say to you what did you get out of that call 
Yeah, exactly. Like, that, that's the, like, it's not what, what, it's what did you get? Not, um, you know, how did you help that, that person? Or how did you prove that you're the right person for them to come to when they need help? Um, mm. And I think that that's really key, right? It's, um, and that's why, like, I, I love being a specialist because, like, I truly feel I can advise and guide a, a customer down a path or, or a candidate down the right career path. Um, and, and that's why, like, I feel really confident that I can add value on every call. Mm, yeah, love that. Right, final question is... I just want you to sort of imagine that I'm a recruiter who's set goals for 2021. I'm hoping for a better year <clears throat> this year. I've written them down. I'm feeling extremely motivated. I, I, I'm just interested to sort of hear what advice you'd sort of give me that you think would give me the best possible chance of achieving the goals that I've set myself. Um, I, I'm not a massive goal setter. I must be honest. Like I've never been, um, I've never, but like I, I know that in the past when I've set goals and I've written down a goal, like, and, and I've not, I've not actually um, achieved that goal. It's because I never really understood what that goal meant for me. Like if I hit it, mm. what did it actually mean, right? So you know, like buying a watch. Well, what what does that watch actually do for me? Or you know, hitting a certain amount of billings. Like what what do I what what does how does my life change if I hit that goal? So I think like the the key for for me with um, if if I was to speak to someone that is setting goals and looking to achieve them is like, but why? Like what does that goal mean? Like. Why, why have you set that goal and how's that going to change your life? And, and then go further than just having the goal, like have the vision around what, what life looks like once that goal is achieved because then it becomes real and, and it's something you can strive towards. Um, because yeah. for me, yeah, like historically, when I've had like goals of hitting certain billings and things like that, it, it didn't motivate me enough because I didn't know what would come with that. Like I didn't focus on the life that that would bring. Yeah, you need to go a bit deeper. Yeah, is I, I had I had that realization because I'm not someone that's massively motivated by money at all. But actually, if you go, I want to earn X, and you understand what that means, going to be able to take my partner away on the holiday that we said that we would do or whatever. It's it's a ta It's just yeah, going a bit deeper and going. Okay, well, if I do achieve that, this is what that will mean, and that's the part that should hopefully get you more motivated and and give you more clarity on why. Yeah, which is for important. sure. Yeah. And I think it's also important not just to set, like, don't just have goals because they're what your your company want you to have. Like you can have goals. <laughs> yeah. that you, like, I, th I think people fall into that trap. Oh, I have to have a goal this year. But if you have that kind of goal, then it doesn't mean anything. Like it has to be something you truly actually want to achieve and, and you know why you want to achieve it. Yeah, I love that. Ben, that was 15 minutes of a mentor. Thank you. Thank you for having me.